Today is February 15th. On the 15th of February 1493, Christopher Columbus writes an open letter describing his discoveries and unexpected items he came across in the New World. This letter was later widely distributed upon his return in Portugal. Aboard which of his Spanish ships did Columbus write his letter? Hello and welcome to a new season of Smarter by the Second. In this episode, I'm joined by Jelle. Hello. Hello. Um, yeah, you can introduce yeah. yourself to the viewers. Uh, my name is Jelle, as I said, as he said. <laughs> um, I'm a third year. Uh, I love music. I love uh, playing football sometimes. Oh, while well, I get injured sometimes, but I... <laughs> Happens. <laughs> yeah, and you chose to compete in uh, geography, is that right? Yeah. Why did you do that? Um, most of the times with Trivial Pursuit and games like that, I have the feeling that with Geography I have the most chance. <laughs> okay, okay. Are you a big GeoGuessr player? Or? Not that much, but... <laughs> ah, like okay, that's alright. I think you'll do just fine. The definition of capital resides. The city or town that functions as the seat of government and administrative center of a country or region. While this definition may seem quite cute and uh, cut and clear, the truth is often that this definition does not apply to the actual chosen capital of a country. It is due to this that the capitals of certain countries end up sometimes being taught incorrectly. Here are more than nine African capitals. Okay, so we have the capitals Antananarivo, Addis Ababa, Kamapal, yeah. Uh, Libreville, Dakar, Nairobi, Rabat, Abuja, and Tripoli. If you read them all, uh, you can I have read time. them all. Okay, so I will uh, uh, call up the. Uh, I will say to you the country, and you have to guess which capital belongs to it. Yeah. It's quite clear. You need five correct answers to survive this round. Okay. Right, and you have five uh, lifelines. So uh, we'll see. Everything clear. Okay, then we'll start. Okay, the first country is Ethiopia. What is Ababa? Morocco. That's Rabat. Nigeria. Um, Nigeria, that is... Tripoli. Kenya. Uh, Nairobi. Uh, Senegal. Dakar. Libya. Abuja. Ugan uh, Uganda. Kampol, Madagascar, Tananarivo, and Gabon, Libreville. Stop, Stop the time. time. Oh, okay. How do you feel about this? I know. I I know for sure. I got two correct. It's quite certain. I got three more. I'll see how it goes. No lifeline. So okay. <coughs> then I'll read the answers. Okay. So first one was Ethiopia and the capitals Addis Ababa. Morocco has Rabat, then Nigeria has Abuja, Kenya has capitals Nairobi, Senegal and Dakar, Libya and Tripoli, Uganda and Kamapal, Madagascar and Antananarivo, and Gabon and Libreville. So that's seven. That's quite good. I'm satisfied. Yeah, yeah of course, <laughs> you should be satisfied. Okay. Water is vital to human survival. It cleanses our thirst, but it, also, it is also used to serve a strategic and defensive role. It is no wonder that the very first sedentary civilization in the history of humanity all settled about rivers and seas, such as the Nile or the Mediterranean Sea. Even now, the sea plays a big role in certain countries' ecosystems. Here are the nine seas and their neighboring countries. Oh, um, we have the Black Sea, the Adriatic Sea, the Baltic Sea, the Red Sea, the Persian Gulf, the Ar uh, what's it called? The Aral Sea, the Sea of Azov, the Yellow Sea, and the Caspian Sea. So I uh, name the countries that. So I name a few countries, and you have to guess. Okay, what sea do they border? Yeah, yeah, I read them all. Yeah, you confident? Everything clear? 
I, uh, I th everything is clear. Okay. Less confident than in the last uh, one. We'll see. Fine. We'll you see. did very well. <laughs> okay. Then we'll start. Okay. First, we have Bulgaria, Romania, Ukraine, Russia, Georgia, and Turkey. Uh, that is the. Um, how, uh, what was that in English? That is the. Caspian Sea. Okay. Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, uh, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Bahrain, uh, the United Arab Emirates, and Oman. That's the Persian Gulf. North Korea, South Korea, and China. That's the Yellow Sea. Turkmenistan, Azerbaijan, Russia, Iran, and Kazakhstan. It's the Sea of Azov. Russia, Denmark, Germany, Sweden, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, it's Poland, the Baltic Sea, Djibouti, Eritrea, Saudi Arabia, Sudan, Egypt, and Yemen. That's the Red Sea. Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan. The Aral Sea. Ukraine and Russia. The Black Sea. Italy, Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Montenegro, Albania and Slovenia. That's the Adriatic Sea. The uh, yeah, Adriatic Sea. Adriatic yeah. Sea. Stop the time. Um, you can switch. Yeah, stop around. the time. Okay. Yeah, do you think you have five correct or? Uh... Yeah, I think I have five correct, but mm, yeah. No lifelines, or do you want to use one? Sure, I'll use one. Yeah. Okay. Then we have one lifeline, so you have one correct answer. For sure. Then let's read out the correct answers. So, at uh, first we had Bulgaria, Romania, Ukraine, Russia, Georgia, and Turkey, and they border the Black Sea. Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Bahrain, uh, United Arab Emirates, and Oman border the Persian Gulf. Then North Korea, South Korea, and China border the Yellow Sea. Turkmenistan, Azerbaijan, Russia, Iran, and Kazakhstan border the Caspian Sea. Russia, Denmark, Germany, Sweden, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, and Finland all border the Baltic Sea. Djibouti, Eritrea, Saudi Arabia, Sudan, Egypt, and Yemen border the Red Sea. Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan border the Aral Sea. Ukraine and Russia border the Sea of Azov. And Italy, Croatia, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Montenegro, Albania, and Slovenia border the Adriatic Sea. Ah, oh, okay. You didn't oh. need that time, <laughs> but it's wow. uh, better safe than sorry, right? No. Yeah. Okay. Well, the next round is uh, you need six correct answers. Okay, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Michael David Edwards, better known as Eddie the Eagle, is an English ski jumper and Olympian who in 1988 became the first competitor since 1928 to represent Great Britain in Olympic ski jumping, finishing last in the normal hill and the large hill events. He held the British ski jumping record from 1988 to 20, 2001. This was a major for Great Britain and it reignited the British passion for winter sports and skiing in particular. Here are the nine ski locations around the world. So we have ski locations or countries where they have ski locations and I will name the, the ski priest. Uh, <laughs> and you will, uh, I have to guess in which country it is. Okay, that's gonna be hard. I'll uh, read <laughs> it out. So we have New Zealand, Japan, the USA, Switzerland, France, Austria, Argentina, Canada, and Italy. <laughs> I'm not much of a skier myself, but we'll see how it goes. Well, maybe it's a geography <laughs> question, right? So yeah. maybe uh, you can name the location. Uh, shall we get started? Okay, first we have the Whistler Blackcomb, the largest of its continent. The Winter Olympics were held here in 2010. That is... Whistler Blackcomb. I, I think that is Canada. Okay, the Courchevel, part of Les Trois Vallées. The 1992 Winter Olympics were held here. I think that's France. Zermatt. Uh, here one can enjoy skiing with the Matterhorn in the background. That's Austria. Aspen. It started out as a mining city, but it transformed into a ski resort. That's then Argentina. 
Corinta D'Ampezzo. It, is, it hosted the 1956 Winter Olympics, but it uh, will again jointly host the 2026 as well. That's the USA. Niseko, one can enjoy the sight of Mount Fuji while skiing down a volcano. That's then. Uh, that's then New Zealand. Okay, a Saint Anton located in Tyrol is one of the pioneers in the area. That's Switzerland. Uh, 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 Carroll Cathedral, named after the cathedral spiked mountain tops, it is the highest of its hemisphere. That's Japan. Uh, Cardona, or Cardona has uh, the most variety on its hemisphere. That's Italy. Okay. Um, want to switch around? I want to switch Austria and Switzerland. Okay, so Saint Anton was then okay, yeah. And yeah. Mount Fuji to Japan, and I don't know what I had at Japan, but Japan. We'll switch those two. Okay, uh, stop the time. Stop the time. Okay. Oh, do you want to use a lifeline? A oh, one. One. I'll use one lifeline. Okay. Then we'll uh, read out the question, the correct answers. The Whistler Blackcomb, the largest of its continent, the Winter Olympics were held there in 2010. That's Canada. Courchevel, part of Les Trois Vallées, the 1992 Winter Olympics were held here. That's France. Then we have Zermatt. Here one can enjoy skiing with the Matterhorn in the background. That's Switzerland. Aspen, it started out as a mining city, but it transformed into a ski resort. That's USA. Corinta de Ampezzo, it already hosted the 1956 Winter Olympics, but it will again jointly host the 2026 uh, as well, that's Italy. Niseko, one can enjoy the sight of Mount Fuji while skiing down a volcano, that's Japan. Saint Anton, located in Tyrol, is one of the pioneers in the area, that's Austria. Then we have uh, Caro Cathedral is named after the cathedral spiked mountain tops. It is the highest of its hemisphere. And then we have Cardona, has the most uh, variety on its hemisphere. That's New Zealand. Hey. Oh, okay, <laughs> that's clutch. That's clutch. Okay, very good. So, on to oh. the next round. The French believe that they were the very first to adopt the colors red, white, and blue. The Dutch know that the French are wrong, and these are but two of the many countries, the flags of which are characterized by the colors red, white, and blue. Here are the nine flags and the colors that characterize them. So, you will see on the screen the, the countries, and I will um, call out the colors that characterize the flags. And I want to say you only have 20, uh, sec uh, yeah, 26 seconds left, so you'll we'll see. see what very quickly to make it to the next episode. So the countries are Botswana, North Korea, Georgia, Bosnia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Brazil, Pakistan, Romania, Lebanon and Vietnam. So you can just take your time, it doesn't... Uh, you can just picture all the flags. Okay, we'll see. Yeah, need more time or shall we uh, read it out? No, just go um, and we'll see if I make it. Okay, then first we have blue, green, white and yellow. That's Georgia. Red and white. That's Vietnam. Green, red and white. That is uh, Brazil. Black, sky blue and white. Uh, Romania. Red and yellow. Red and yellow is Botswana. Blue, white and yellow. Uh, North Korea. Green and white. Pakistan. Blue, red, yellow. Lebanon. And the last. And blue, red, Botsinia, white. Herzegovina. Stop the time. Stop the time. Oh, yeah, you don't have any yeah. time anymore. Okay, then uh, I, I hate to keep you waiting, so we'll just read out the correct answers then. Okay. So, first we have blue, green, white, and yellow. That's the flag of Brazil. Oh. Then red and white is Georgia. And green, red, and white is Lebanon. Black, sky blue and white is Botswana, red and yellow is Vietnam, blue, white and yellow is 
Bosnia and Herzegovina. Green and white is Pakistan. Blue, red and yellow is Romania. And blue, red and white is North Korea. <laughs> so one correct. Yeah. Ah, okay. Quick fire round. I'll blame it on that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It was very hard. Okay, but thank you anyway for coming to the studio and participating. For you, we have an award. Klok beer. Thank you. We liked having you on the show. Yeah, it was a fun time. Okay, and uh, then we'll go to the next contestant. We are joined by our next contestant, Lars. Hello, Lars. Welcome. Uh, can you please introduce us, uh, yourself? Um, well, uh, I'm a first year TCS student and I am greatly enjoying the university and the ABBA quiz. Oh, okay, yeah. So you are uh, in, uh, in interactive, is that right? Yeah, yeah. but I am, I'm kind of inter interactive to make jokes about it. But oh, okay, okay, but um, this is a better activity than all the interactive activities, right? No, <laughs> Why no do you remark? ask me such no difficult remark? questions Oh, already. it's fine. Okay, but you are no competing remarks. in uh, the category of history. Yeah. Uh, any reason? Uh, well, I figured uh, what would a math student not be good at, and I figured it would be history, so <laughs> I chose that. Uh, oh, okay, you think it will be easy. In the hope of simple easy. questions. Okay, yes. well, I hope that for you as well. In 2022 Marvel miniseries Moon Knight, Oscar Isaac interprets museum worker Stephen Grant as well as mercenary Mark Spector, two personalities coexisting in a man suffering from DID, Dissociative Identity Disorder. Both characters serve in the series to Avatar Khonshu, the Egyptian god of the moon, whose name means traveler. While Khonshu may only be famous thanks to Marvel comics, the Egyptian pantheon knows many more major gods, each with their own area of expertise. Here are then nine major Egyptian gods and their area of influence. So on the screen you will see the names of the Egyptian gods. They are Thoth, Isis, Ptah, Anubis, Seth, Osiris, Sekhmet, Ra, and Horus. And then I will, um, I will call out, I will name their description, and you have to guess which of the gods it is. You can read through it again if you're not sure about it. Do you recognize any of the gods? Osiris, well, I recognize of them from uh, university <laughs> website names. <Yeah. laughs> That's about it. Uh, but not House Anubis, the series. Uh, well, I've watch like maybe one episode of that, so okay. we'll see how it uh, For this question, you need five correct answers to pass to the next okay. round. You ready? Yeah. Okay, uh, the first god is a major god, usually shown as a falcon or as a human child. He is linked. Okay, a lioness goddess, both destructive and violent and capable of warding off disease, protector of the pharaohs who led them in war, and the consort of Ptah, and one of many forms of the Eye of Ra. Isis. This is the god of the sun. Well, same picture, so Sekhmet. Okay, uh, this is the god of the dead. They carry the dead to the judgment place of the underworld. Um, fourth. An ambivalent god, characterized by violence, chaos and strength, connected with the desert, mythological murderer of, Os of Osiris and enemy of Horus, but also a supporter of the king. That's Anubis. A moon god and a god of writing and scribes. He is the patron deity of... Okay. Wife of Osiris and mother of Horus, linked with uh, funerary rites, That's, motherhood. Uh, God of death and resurrection, who rules the underworld and enlivens vegetation. That's Osiris, and where I said uh, okay. Anubis, I think it's Seth. Okay, a creator deity and god of craftsmen, he is also the patron god of Memphis. Oh, no, I'm confused. Anubis. Yeah, stop, stop the time when you want to. Okay. Uh, Difficult, right? Well, yeah, I was just looking at the the questions being filled in, and I don't think they went to the place where I answered, but um, yeah, I think that's... Uh, 
you know, but you have uh, five use, lifelines. They cost. I'll use 16. two lifelines. Two lifelines. Okay. Just well, in case. Okay. Then we'll read out the correct answers. A major god, usually shown as a falcon or a human child, he is linked with the sky, the sun, kingship, protection and healing, and is often said to be the son of Osiris and Isis. That's Horus. A lioness goddess, both destructive and violent and capable of warning of disease, protector of the pharaohs who led them to war, the consort of Ptah, and one of many forms of the Eye of Ra. That's Sekhmet. This is the sun god, that's Ra. God of the dead, they carry the dead to the judgment place of the underworld, that's Anubis. An ambivalent god, characterized by violence, chaos and strength, connected with the desert, mythological murderer of Osiris and the enemy of Horus, but also a supporter of the king, that's Set. A moon god and a god of writing and scribes, he is the patron deity of Hermopolis, that's Thoth. Wife of Osiris and mother of Horus, linked with the funerary rites, motherhood, protection and magic, she became a major deity in Greek and Roman religion, is Isis, god of death and resurrection who rules the underworld and enlivens vegetation, husband of Isis, he is sometimes regarded as the sun god. That's Osiris, a creator deity and god of craftsmen, he is also the patron god of Memphis, that's Ptah. Ooh, oh, barely. <laughs> right side, I'm good at using lifelines. Yeah, that's, that's about it. Oh, you can take that home, yeah. Ah, oh, okay. I'm glad you made the next round. On the 22nd of March, 1687, Jean-Baptiste Lully, a French composer, died of a gangrenous abscess after accidentally piercing his foot with a staff while he was vigorously conducting a te deum. It was customary at that time to conduct by banging a staff on the floor. He refused to have his leg amputated so he could still dance. This is just one of many curious deaths that have taken place throughout history. Here are then nine weird or curious deaths that have taken important historical figures. Okay, so you see nine uh, historical figures and I won't uh, name the way they died and you have to guess who it is. So we have Captain Edward Teach, we have Moliere, we have Antilla the Hun, Pope Adrian IV, Mary Queen of Scots, we have Pythagoras of Samos, we have Elizabeth of Bavaria, St. Lawrence and Grigory Rasputin. I recognize some of the names and that's about yeah? it. Okay. Well, maybe you know after you hear the way they died, you're like, ah, oh, okay. Let's, uh, okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. This Russian mystic uh, consumed tea, cake and wine laced with cyanide, but he did not appear to Last be weekend. affected by it. Also known as Blackbeard, he died after sustaining an outstanding amount of injuries. Five gun wounds. Captain Edward Teach. Shortly before the Emperor Frederick I of the Holy Roman Empire could be excommunicated, Pope this, Adrian, uh, the fourth. this ruthless leader was killed by a mere nosebleed. Oui. Attila the Hun. The fr a French playwright suffered a pulmonary hemorrhage caused by tuberculosis while playing the part of a hypochondriac oh, yeah. in his own play. She was sentenced to death after a letter emerged revealing a plot to murder her cousin, Queen Elizabeth uh, I. Mary Queen of Scots. This Greek philosopher is said to have been killed uh, by his political... He was roasted alive on a giant Saint grill. Lawrence. She was stabbed with a thin... Inferia. Stop the time. Yeah? How do you feel about this? Uh, well, I'm more confident in that. Since yeah. uh, I you need uh, time five, uh, five correct answers. Do you think you have that? Uh, I do. Okay, then I will read out the answers. Okay, so this Russian mystic consumed tea, cakes and wine laced with cyanide, but he did not appear affected by it. He was then shot once in the chest and believed to be dead, but after a while he leapt up. He was then shot again and the conspirators wrapped. That's uh, Grigory Rasputin. Also known as Blackbeard, he died after sustaining an outstanding amount of injuries, five gun wounds and 20 sword wounds. That's Captain Edward Teach. Shortly before the Emperor Frederick I of the Holy Roman Empire could be excommunicated, 
This historical figure perished while choking on a fly which was floating in his wine glass. That's Pope Adrian IV. This ruthless leader was killed by a mere nosebleed. That's Attila the Hun. The French playwright suffered a pulmonary hemorrhage caused by tuberculosis while playing the part of a hypochondriac in his own play, Le Malade Imaginaire. She was sentenced to death. Oh, that's uh, Moyer, sorry. Yes. She was sentenced to death after a letter emerged revealing a plot to murder her cousin, Queen Elizabeth I. At her decapitation, the first blow missed her head and revealed her hair to be fake. That's Mary, Queen of Scots. This Greek philosopher is said to have been killed by his political opponents after being blocked in his path by a bean field, which he deemed too dirty to cross. That's Pythagoras of Samos. He was roasted alive on a giant grill during the persecution of Valerian August. August 10th is, na August 10th is named after him. That's St. Lawrence. She was stabbed by a thin file by Italian anarchist Luigi Lucchini. I think, yeah. Her extremely tight corset held the wound, uh, wound closed, but she did not realize what had happened. That's Elizabeth of Bavaria. That's nine correct answers. Very well done. That means you get an extra lifeline, so you're back to four. Do I get a lifeline on each question? Um, you get a lifeline extra if you have nine correct answers oh. in a round. I thought I saw one appear, but oh no. Yeah, 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 you got one. No, no, no. You yeah, don't get before, the seconds back. Before, before, before. Oh, okay, very okay. well done. Okay, no, I didn't. Okay. okay. The Aeneid, written by Virgilius, tells the story of Aeneas, a Trojan warrior forced to escape a flaming Troy with his father and son. This epic tale proceeds then to explain how from Aeneas the Romans are derived and how the emperor at the time was a descendant from the gods. But this tale also makes the note how awful Aeneas truly was. Given that he leaves his wife to die in Troy, abandons Dido later on and starts another war in Italian territory for Lavinia, a princess he decides to marry, by killing her future husband. The descendants of Aeneas were thought not much better. Here are then nine famous Roman leaders. So you get a picture and a description, and then you see the answers on the screen, which are uh, Roman emperors. They are uh, Romulus, our emperors or kings can be. So Romulus, Constantine I, Hadrian, Nero, Augustus, Caligula, Gaius Julius Caesar, uh, Trojanus, and Romulus Augustulus. Okay. You recognize a few of these? Or, uh, yeah, quite a few. But ah, okay. I think it's still going to be quite difficult. Oh, and uh, by the way, you need six correct answers for this yeah. round. Yeah. yeah? Ready? I'm ready. Okay. He's a dictator and the last leader before the imperial age of Rome. Uh, Caesar. Died Known as a ruthless and deviant leader, he is known as the Mad Emperor who elected his horse into consul. N Nero. This emperor sought to extend the boundaries of the empire to the east. He undertook a vast building program and enlarged social uh, welfare. Adrian. This emperor oversaw the Great Fire of Rome. He is even said to have been fiddling during the fire, both in playing music That's and... That's Nero, and where I said Nero is supposed to be Augustus. Okay, he is regarded as the very last emperor of Rome. His reign lasted only ten months after he was disposed by a barbarian Odo... Uh, Romulus Augustus. Okay. He is the legendary founder and the first king of Rome. Romulus. He was the first emperor to convert into Christianity and to allow Christianity as a religion through the Edict of Milan. That's Trajanus. Adoptive son of Caesar, he was the first emperor of Rome. That's Augustus, and where I said Augustus is Constantine one. This emperor is most famous for trying to conquer England and for constructing there a wall named after That's him. That's Hadrian, and where I said Hadrian is Caligula. Stop the time. Stop the time. Okay. Oh, that's gonna... You need... You switched around a bit, but do you feel confident? I mean, I have 30 seconds left. Yeah, that's maybe. It's not handy if you want to... Uh, uh, well, I'm quite sure I'll be out then, but... Yeah, if you uh, use a lifeline and you only have, uh, what is it, 14 seconds for... I mean, that's the last question, right? Yeah. 
So I can either hope that that I but, get lucky uh, here, or I need to. But dude, thirty seconds is also very short already. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's hope I. Do you want to use a lifeline? No, or no, no. Okay. They're going for it. Then we'll read out the question. So, dictator and last leader before the imperial age of Rome, he died uh, due to 23 stabs. That's Gaius Julius Caesar. Known as a ruthless and deviant leader, he is known as the mad emperor who elects his horse into a consul. That's Caligula. This emperor sought to extend the boundaries of the empire to the east, undertook a vast building program and enlarged social welfare. That's Trajanus. This emperor oversaw the great fire of Rome. He is even said to have been fiddling during the fire, both in playing music and in being an ineffective leader. That's Nero. He is regarded as the very last emperor of Rome. His reign only lasted 10 months, after which he was disposed by the bar barbarian Odoacer, Romulus Augustus. He was the legendary founder and first king of Rome. That's Romulus. He was the first emperor to convert to Christianity and to allow Christianity as a religion through the Edict of Milan. That's Constantine the first. The adoptive son of Caesar, he was the first emperor of Rome. That's Augustus. And this emperor is, not, uh, is most famous for trying to conquer England and for constructing there a wall named after him. That's Hadrian. Ooh, okay. Quite fortunate. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you're right in not using uh, Lifeline. You're very good in that. Uh, not using or using Lifeline. I mean, if I would, I would have used one if I had like more seconds. But oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well. Okay. So uh, this round is also for six points. The Paris Commune was a revolutionary socialist government that controlled Paris from March 18th to May 28th, 1871. It was established by radicalized defectors from the French National Guard, which have been mobilized to defend Paris in the Franco-Prussian War. It was also the revolution to conclude the Age of Revolution, a period from the late 18th to the mid 19th centuries, during which a number of significant revolutionary movements occurred in most of Europe and the Americas. Revolutions quite literally shaped Europe and the world into the way we know it nowadays. Here are then nine historically significant revolutions. So you will get a description and then you have to guess which revolution it is. Oh, okay, there's a lot of revolution on the screen. So we have the Industrial Revolution, the American Revolution, the Chinese Revolution, the Serbian Revolution, the Haitian Revolution, February Revolution, French Revolution, Romantic Revolution, and the October Revolution. Have you heard about these? I've seen most of them. Ah, uh, okay. I have 30 seconds, so... Okay, we'll minutes. do it quick. Yes. Okay, so ready? I'm ready. Okay. Started with the Estas General and exploded in 1789 with the storming of the Bastille. Ah, uh, French Revolution. Took place between 1804 and 1835, during which his territory evolved from Ottoman province into a rebel... Uh, Serbian country. Revolution. Also known as the Bourgeois Democratic Revolution, this revolution took place in the Soviet Union. Uh, the October Revolution. Composed of the July and Belgian Revolution of 1830, they saw the coronations of Industrial Louis Revolution. Ideological and political Chinese revolution. Chinese uh, Revolution, uh, Romantic Revolution, February <laughs> Revolution, Haitian Revolution, American Revolution. Uh, okay. Stop the time. Okay. <laughs> well, we <think> have, uh, <laughs> Let's hope I said it so quickly that they forget the order and it's put in the right answers. <laughs> That's a tactic. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's hope so. Then, um, yeah, I'll read out the, the good and the right answers. So it started with the Estat General and exploded in 1789 with the storming of the Bastille. It's the French Revolution. It took place between 1804 and 1835, during which this territory evolved from an Ottoman province into a rebel territory, a monarchy and modern country. That's the Serbian Revolution. Also known as the Bourgeois Democratic Revolution, this revolution took place in the Soviet Union of 1970. That's the February Revolution. Composed of the July and Belgian Revolution of 1830, they saw the coronations of Louis Philippe and Leopold I. That's a Romantic Revolution. 
ideological and political revolution that occurred between 1765 and 1791. It is also known as the War of Independence, it's the American Revolution. Successful insurrection by self-liberated slaves against the French colonial rule in Saint-Domingue. Domingue? Okay, the revolt began on the 22nd of August 1791 and ended in 1804 with the former colony's independence, that's the Haitian Revolution. In 1911, a group of revolutionaries led a successful revolt against the Qing Dynasty, ending the imperial system, that's the Chinese Revolution. Officially known as the Great Socialist Revolution and the Soviet Union or Bolshevik Revolution, uh, this uh, revolution took place between 1917 and 1923, that's the October Revolution. And this evolution was the transition to new manufacturing processes in Great Britain, continental Europe and the United States that occurred during the period from around 1760 to about 1820 to 1840, that's the Industrial Revolution. Well, I thought maybe if I get the Soviet revolutions <laughs> the right way around. And yeah, I, PR look. I mean, yeah, but uh, unfortunately. bad luck, unfortunately. Yeah, bad, bad luck, luck, bad luck. Ah, okay. I just say five answers in three seconds and who knows something is correct. But, uh. Well, yeah, well, at least thank you for joining us today. Therefore, we have a, a small prize, a participation award. Thank you. Thank you. Clock for you. Thank you. Okay, this was it for today's episode. Thank you all for watching and see you next week. <laughs>